Uh, Legra and I are sharing a client that is um, a little bit challenging. Um, and so I thought maybe we would talk through some of the stuff and kind of do a little case study presentation. Um, if you guys want to do that, we can talk about that and do that. Is that okay? Or did you have specific questions that you wanted to go over? Sound good? good? All right, so let me give you some background information. Allegra, feel free to pipe in whenever you want on this. Um, so this is a client who um, yeah. is, um, she's hypermobile, really, and very weak, and has been through a lot physically, um, been through a lot of weight change in her body as well. So she's overweight um, on towards the obese side, but she was morbidly obese before. So she um, was really super heavy, lost a lot of weight, is still on the heavy side, and is very, very hyper mobile in her joints. So, um, you know, that really hyperextended knees, and no control, so very weak. Uh, and that combination of extra weight, weakness, and hypermobility is a really challenging one at times. What's really interesting about her and what makes her really fun, I think, for me, or just fun to work with, is her energy and her spirit. She really wants to get things right, which is great. And she has an incredible sense of body awareness. So she knows when her muscles aren't firing properly. And yeah. so she can tell you, mm, this is not firing. I can't feel it working here, which is great for somebody who's not been really athletic her whole life. She knows when those muscles are on or when they're not. And so it, it's, she gives a lot of great feedback, which really helps steer her sessions for me anyway, because she can say, nope, I'm not feeling it there. And you can see uh, her joints just want to go right in any all kinds of directions her joints just want to go. Um, so today I was working with her. So I work with her once a week and Allegra works with her once a week. And um, I was working with her on activation of her muscles before getting into big motions. And big motions for her are footwork on the reformer. Like that is a really challenging exercise for her because what she wants to happen is she wants to hyperextend and lock her knees into that position she locks her pelvis into that position. And oh, the one other piece we have going on is that her right hip is um, basically bone on bone. And she's young, I think she's in her forties. So I think it was, you know, a combination of bad genetics, being overweight, having hyperextending joints and no muscular support. So all, all probably a sequence of events that led to that. But she's, she doesn't wanna have a surgery if she can't, or she wants to postpone that as long as she can. And she wants to be strong before she even considers something like that. So um, I, what I thought would be interesting is just to show you, I, can you guys picture what she might look like if you put her on the reformer, right? So hyperextending back, hyperextending knees. Um, so, okay, so if you can picture her, then imagine what, what do we need to fire on her body? What what would we need to activate in order to give her support in footwork, just for footwork? Belly, glutes, powerhouse, feet, inner thighs, open thighs. One other you haven't mentioned yet. Bottom. You did mention that. Yeah. Hamstring. Not so much as? Ask pelvic floor, multi inner thighs, feet. Keep, keep going. What? Genevieve knows. She's, thank you. <laughs> You've been sitting with that for a little bit. Yes, quads. So uh, if you want to slow down the last bit of extension, right? Uh, so when you get to knee extension, if you want to slow down, that last bit of knee extension so you don't end up in hyperextension, it's actually your quads on the front that have to slow down the knee from going into that hyperextension place. So it's the quads, it's the vastus medialis mostly, 
the oblique part of that. And that's not the only muscle that does that, but it is a really good one. Those quads have to really contract and hold. Hamstrings have to play a role too. Yep, it all, glutes have to play a role. It all has to be aligned right and in the right place, but quads have to slow down. So it's eccentric work really on the quads, right? Lengthening contraction of the quads in towards extension, but being able to be supportive. So she has very little control there. And what I told her is kind of homework is that she should never lock her knees. No matter what she does, she should never lock her knees. And if her, if she ends up a little bent all the time, that's actually better than hyperextending at this point for her. So, and she says that if she stands up and doesn't let her legs hyperextend, she can totally feel her muscles on all the time and her legs get tired more quickly. And I was like, yay, good, you're getting tired. We're using muscles that we like that, right? Instead of just being on her joints. So um, she said that a lot of times she gets on the reformer, she can't feel that her right leg and glute and hip and everything is working properly. So I said, let's just activate first. So a few of the things I had her do were just really simple exercises with the ball. So I thought I would show you, and she felt like they really helped on the floor. Yep, before, before even getting onto the reformer, I had her do a bunch of exercises on the floor just to see if we could get her legs functioning right for her. So the first thing, I should just move so you can see everything. I just had her take the ball, you guys all know this, right? Um, and inner thigh activation, right? So first I had her just drop there's a drop and relax into the floor sort of feeling. So just getting heavy into the floor and, and see what where things land. So I let her just get there and land heavy on the floor. And then I had her start by pressing in, activating her inner thighs, right? Just gently pressing in activate, activation. I had her doing it here. Um, pulses, I had her doing single leg. I had her then hold this steady and try and bring her legs to tabletop, holding on and same, right? So we could get a little activation here. And then I had her take the ball and place it underneath, should do this side, underneath her leg. So there were two exercises here. One is, just keeping the back of the knee at the ball and pressing the back of the knee into the ball and straightening the lower leg. Okay, this is the short arc quad, but I really emphasize the fact that I wanted her to use the back of the knee, the ball at the back of the knee to stop her hyperextension. So squash the ball, extend the leg. Because now I get quad contraction, but I don't, can't get hyperextension because the ball is stopping that motion, right? So quad contraction without hyperextension, right? She could really feel that. And then I had her take this ball, keeping the other leg bent and lengthen through the hip, press. So imagine that line, you know, I always talk about that, going through your body, out the back, back of the thigh. So reaching long and releasing. So belly dropping down, reaching long and releasing, right? So she's basically hip stretching, hip tractioning, contracting through the leg and release. And she could really feel like she was doing something in her deep abdominals, in her glutes, in her quads. It really made her feel like she could put herself together to get there and then release, yeah? So those are the ones we did supine and then any questions on those or do those look okay? Um, quick question, just the hypermobility aspect of that one leg reaching, does that, that doesn't bother her sacrum at all? Actually didn't, no. There was, I told her to really anchor the pelvis here on the side so we're not getting a whole shear, but it was really activation. So drop, let me switch sides. So, so would be active, like trying to activate there. This is dropping in. So really keeping that drop and then having to move. So it was very 
hip, knee, foot, rather than sheer, rather than this wasn't happening, right? So because I think that was holding stable, it did not bother her there. Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so maybe try and keep that anchored is the key for that. Any others on those ones? Okay, and then I had her go onto her belly and take the ball between her feet. This was kind of mean, she felt, but it worked. So I didn't feel so bad. So here, like keeping this, this light length was key. So I had her really think about coccyx curl here, picking up coccyx curl so she get, got that length. And then I had her lay here, squeeze the ball and try and just pick her knees up off the floor, squeezing the ball and then release. So just knees off the floor, squeeze the ball parallel, and then release. So we did that. And then we did it turned out. And this one, she had such a hard time with. Um, but she will work hard at anything. So it's really nice. But she, this one, she said, was so much harder for her. Same thing, heels. And then I asked if she could float a little bit. But again, it's really more about the knees coming off for her. Because we're trying to get the control here at the knee. Uh, and a glute activation, but it'd be easier if I just let the legs bend a bit and come up than if I have her really work to get the knees up, right, in that turnout. And then I had her come up here, just squeezing and right. releasing here. I was trying to write at the same time. You said when she's in turnout to try to get the knees straight or keep them bent a little bit? Off the floor. Knees, knees is what you're after. You're trying to get the knees off the floor, the knees up. Yeah, it's not bending, it's knees up. Got it, that's why I'm sure. Yeah. And then here, this is just more that activation glutes, right? So trying to get glutes on here by having her squeeze here to activate the muscles there. And so those were really, the basic exercises we did before we even put her on the reformer. And she felt like she could get on the reformer and have activation already, not have to go searching so much for the activation, just because we got quads firing the right quads, right? Not big bulky takeover quads and hip flexors, which is, you know, a lot of people who are going through hip osteoarthritis or degenerative changes at the hip end up in the psoas and really in that psoas because so as is just trying to protect the hip joint so much that that turns on and fires more than anything else. So um, she felt like she didn't have to fight with her so as so much. And then on the reformer, when I first got her on for footwork, we started out in little V and I had her put her hands in the hip crease, right? So as she could, she could just by putting her fingers in the hip crease, she could weight the pelvis down and then just free the legs to do the work that we wanted her to do, right? Without having to also grip in the psoas. Somehow it helped her anchor pelvis and turn off psoas by having that. And, and coming in, sometimes I'll have people push the thighs away as they bend in, which just creates a little bit of traction between the hip in the hip joint itself. So they don't feel if they're feeling that pinchy compression in the hip joint, sometimes having the hands there as they come in, pushing away really helps keep space there. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's what. Sorry, I just had a quick interjection, but question, but uh, tell me what you think. Now, what about um, maybe just like on parallel footwork? Um, uh, I guess balls of the feet. No, first first position. What if we didn't go in all the way? What if we just stayed like a like a two thirds, like a, a two thirds one third to kind of feel that strength there? I mean, you could. Her problem is, and, and that would be safe, absolutely. But it wouldn't be attacking her problem. Like oh. Her problem is learning how to extend with the right muscles and to control the knees at extension. 
So you would be avoiding the problem. So say we put her in a group class setting. Absolutely. I would do that so that you don't have to worry that she's hyperextending or doing something wrong or going to hurt herself, right? That's a super safe thing to do. But are we getting to the problem that she actually has? Not entirely. We're helping her strengthen, but we're not helping her address the fact that she can't straighten her legs without hyperextending. She can't zip up properly, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's, yeah it makes sense because I see now because the, the focus was on going the full movement of her range of motion, trying to get that strong there. That's trying to get right trying to get her strong through that whole range yeah, As, yeah exactly so the idea is and and right the the idea changes whether you can focus just on the one person or if you've got a, somebody you're trying just trying to keep safe in a group class right so you would change the focus based on totally thank you yeah yeah those modifications for if we have clients in a group setting you know, they're super hyper flexible and private, kind of like how we can attack it is a little differently. So yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think it is really different whether you have somebody in a group setting or what your goal is. That's always the why that I ask you guys, why are you doing that? Why would you want to do that? Why wouldn't you do that, right? Why? Um, and what is that goal? The goal for her is to train her body to be able to use its full range without ending up in her joints, which means avoiding any, and this is gonna be true for all of her joints. It's true for her low back. It's true for her SI joint. It's true for her elbows, which we haven't even, I haven't even touched her elbows because the hip is the problem, right? So we've really not gotten very far because like I said, she doesn't have a lot of endurance. Oh, the other exercise that I have her doing is, um, Term, two different things, terminal knee extension on the, with the reformer strap. So I have her, you guys know what I mean when I say the terminal knee extension exercise. It's the one that we typically do standing up with the band behind the knee, right? And it attached to something in front. And then you're working on just pressing back and pressing back. So controlling, same thing, controlling that extension. So I have her using, we put the reformer spring on yellow and I have her take the foot strap, stand right beside the reformer, the reformer is right here. And I have her stand right beside the reformer with the strap right behind her knee and then doing that work. And the reformer carriage is moving, she's facing the risers and the reformer carriage is moving and she's working on the pressing. Now, what was interesting is she could do it in a squat with her torso down. It got very challenging for her to do it torso up. Interesting, right? Why you could do this when her big glutes were on helping her. She had a lot harder time when it had to be just glute medius. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I let her do it both. I, we tried both ways and I let her just get the idea because I'm so intent on helping her get this. Yeah. So, um, so that was the one. And the other thing we've been working on is taking that same strap, putting it down. I have her actually stand on the box beside the reformer and then just try and pull back. She can do four, that's it. And then she has a very hard time her standing up, her her hip wants to go on its excursion. Right? She has a very hard time keeping her hips underneath her when she's on one leg. So she she works so hard to try and get just four pullbacks. So that's that's basically what we did um, in a forty five minute session today was those mat things, the reformer, those ones on the reformer, um, and then. I did, oh, the bridging. The other, the last thing I did, or before also the reformer, the last thing on the floor, was I had her do bridging. But when we did bridging with her feet down, she felt pain at, she felt pain first out here, actually yeah. it was on her left side, out here and then here. Why? Yeah. So why does that happen? If I'm here and I'm bridging and I have pain, lateral, anterior lateral, 
And then she had pain when I told her. So then I said, okay, let's take your feet a little wider. And then she rolled up. She said, okay, now I have pain right here in the front of the knee. You guys have any ideas why that's happening? Were her feet too close together towards the butt? Was she going, I don't know, yeah. It's too much to the butt? Okay. Uh, lateral, sorry. Go ahead, Jenny. I was just gonna say the lateral one, I would say her IT band is really tight. Mm -hmm. um, so then I take the feet wide. That's what I right. was wondering. I take the feet wide, she pushes up and then she has pain just anterior instead of just anterior lateral. So what's going on here? No, yeah, something's... I don't know. No, you don't know? It's a no thigh, not you. I don't know. Okay, I'll give you a hint. And we're gonna play a little quiz game. It gets, gets worse if she bends her knees more. Yeah, is it the quad? Yes, quad tendon. Right. So a little patella femoral or quad tendonitis. Um, right, too much patella and inserts front on the tibia. Tibia, right? Tibial tuberosity comes across the hip, across the knee. So it's on a lot of stretch. Quads on a lot of stretch. Oh my gosh, we might have found the tight muscle in her body that's not working very well. Is the quad rectus femoris maybe? Yeah. So what did I do or what I did? Yeah. Because I told her to take. Take the, what's that, Allegra, sorry? Getting really exciting, I was like, what is it, what is it? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Drum roll, I told her to I take the I think I know box. that one. I think I know that one. You know hmm. which one? The pain of that one. Oh, the pain of that one? Yes. yes. That's not it. So I told her to take her box off the reformer and put it on the floor. I don't have a box, so I'm just pretending this is my box. And then I had her lay down and put her legs on top of it out here. Yes, so what did I do? I took the bend, a lot of the bend away, and then we were able to bridge, right? Because now, and she had no pain. Yep. So we could fire up abs, we, and then I worked with her on firing backside to open hips to get that activity. Yes, so squeezing glutes to open hips. That was what I was trying to cue her in. Um, I had her rolling up and down. That's a little bit less relevant at this moment, whether I have her roll or just press up and down. But what's more relevant is using glutes, fire glutes inhibit hip flexors and inhibit right. front structures. Yep. Right? That's more important for her. So supportive, ta so, so supporting the su supportive tabletop positioning, right? So that you don't use the hip flexors. Yeah, that would be, if I wanted her tabletop, I would want to support it. But this is more to take the pressure off, to take the flexion out of the leg so that we you won't can even, work through. Okay. Right. So they're not even, you don't even, because when I go up into uh, just for me, I, I, you don't even have the flexion there, right? Because as soon as it even gets up into flexion, I can still feel it. So you're not in even a flexion, hip flexion. Is that right? I'm not sure I understood. Can you? Right. I, I'm just kind of, I guess I'm relating it to personal experience. It, it, the legs are out in such a way that it's not even engaging. The It's not putting the quad on stretch so much. Okay. Right. So that takes the pressure off the anterior knee entirely. Anterior. Okay. So then we can focus on everything else. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. can now focus on the boots, pressing and opening hips. Whereas before we were concerned about the knee pain and focus, we ended up just focused on that. It was limiting what we wanted to do and the activation we needed. And, and this is gonna help that in the long run anyway, because if we can get hip muscles crossing hip open, stretched out, then we're gonna be loosening the rectus femoris, which is probably part of the problem here with this patella tendon or anterior knee pain that she's having. That's the so, rest of them, yes, because they cross it, but yes, okay. Yes, so then what I didn't do with her, which I should do, is what? 
if I said that's the end of my session, what didn't I do that I should do now with that information? If you want to strengthen the quad. Um, we, we are strengthening the quads. We did that. We what are we not doing? Stretching, so I'm not sure. Say that again, Alika. Oh, I was, if, if stretching, if you don't want to do any stretching wasn't the problem, I would say stretch the hamstring. But because, no, that's not right. Because the quad is not too tight. There's no strength. Um, actually, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. You're on the right track. Strengthen the hamstring more? Do a little. Um, sure, but that's not what we're missing because we did strengthen hamstrings. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm on the wrong I don't know. I don't know. You were on the, you were on the right track. Okay, who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Hamstring. Uh, maybe some knee press up there. Did you do any knee press? We did knee press. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gentle quad stretching. Thank you. Yes, we have to stretch the quads. Oh, so mm -hmm. now you have to stretch the quads. Oh, so okay. okay. That's why I said you're on the right track. Your thinking was right, right? You have to stretch that quad. You've got so it's interesting, right? In every hypermobile person I've ever worked with, there is one place that's tight. And that one place overreacts, over tightening to make up for the lack of stability everywhere else. It just thinks it can do it. And I think in her case, it alternates between psoas and rectus for her. So I, until today's session, I was thinking more psoas gripping at the hip, right? So as gripping at the hip is a very typical hip osteoarthritis type of pattern. But it turns out that it's not just that. She's got both her quads pulling and her left one was the one that was bothering, not the right one, because she's doing... Well, I should tell you what happened when she got on the reformer is, um, and then I'll finish that phrase. She had her feet on the reformer. And what I could, what I saw was that this is what I saw when she was bent, right? Left heel up, right heel down. And when she would straighten, oh. I saw this. Okay. Right. So what is she doing when we're when she's doing footwork? If I'm doing this and I'm seeing this, and then I'm seeing her get out there and I'm seeing the right one straightened more, the left one stay not straightened, what am I doing? Working one leg. Exactly. Which leg is working? Right. The left leg no. is compensating. Oh. The left leg's compensating, right? Because if I lower the heel, then they then they then they go the same. Yeah. By lifting the heel, this is what I'll see. And that way I keep control. Like this leg is sure leg was just going along for the ride. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm cheating. Right? So why is that quad tight? Now we know. Left quad tight, because she's doing everything with her left quad. Easy. So how would you stretch her left, just stretch her left quad or stretch both quads? I'd probably stretch both and I'd probably do it in a really secure way. So yeah, what, 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 would, what would the most secure, most stable way to stretch a quad that you can think of? What is that? I was thinking lying on her side, laid back or on her tummy with the, the strap to hold it so she doesn't hyper on her front. Yeah. I would say on her stomach is going to be the most stable. Absolutely. I agree. Okay. Right. Because you can anchor pelvis. I like the strap idea because if we anchor pelvis in, sorry, if we anchor pelvis on stomach, pelvis pushing down, right, I can then have her bend her knee, keep the hip flexor done. I'll show you on this side. Right, so oh, if I anchor God. pelvis, I can keep pelvis pressing while I bend the knee, rather than what tight people do, which is lift the pelvis and the butt when they bend the knee. Yeah. And Anna, can you repeat? There's a car alarm going off. Oh, sorry. Yes. 
So I would anchor oh. pelvis, right? And then keep that down and bend the knee. Being really careful not to lift butt as the leg bends. Yeah. yeah? So pelvis down and then we can strap the foot and then we don't have to worry about all the rest of her doing crazy things. Keep the pelvis pushing down and then move into a stretch here of the quad. And she'll feel a stretch, which um, if, she, if she's hypermobile and not tight, she won't feel a stretch. And then, you, then you'd be wrong. But I, will, I would bet a lot of money on it that if you go to that and you stretch her left quad, it's going to feel a stretch there. Okay. Yeah? Um, yeah. She cheats and her butt bumps up. Okay. We did a quad stretch standing up. I hired her to do this. And she's like, I don't feel anything. Side stretch on the report. That's how I'm going to feel a stretch. So. She thought she was going to feel a stretch with a quad stretch on the reformer. Yeah, because she didn't feel anything this way. So we went on the reformer and did the, the she felt a stretch. Okay. He said it yeah. was a stretch, but I mean, I think that's strengthening and stretching at the same time. Yeah. Yep. I bet if you put it on her stomach and anchor pelvis, you'll get a stretch. If she's just too mobile everywhere else in her back, too much mobility there, that if you're standing up, it's too easy. I don't feel a stretch much when I'm standing up um, with the quad stretch either, but I can feel it laying on my stomach. So there's just too many ways to get around it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, if I, I have to like really actively like tuck my tail under yeah. to get a mm -hmm. stretch um, when, I, when I'm standing. So, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I'll use the, the stand up and use the strap because otherwise they're just hyperextend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The way that I found it in standing, which is interesting, I accidentally discovered this not that long ago, is because I didn't really find it. So you won't see my head, but that's okay. I didn't really, if I go like this, I don't really find the stretch so much, even if I'm really trying. But if I take my foot and put it against the wall behind me and then lean back into it and at the same time reach my kneecap, so I'm reaching my kneecap towards the wall and I'm leaning back, now I feel a stretch. Yeah, yeah. And I'm push, pulling my belly in. So now I'm really getting a really nice stretch. But this is very similar to what would happen if I was laying on the floor. Yeah. So I accidentally discovered that I could do it this way. I'm sure somebody else didn't accidentally discover this, but I did accidentally discover it. <laughs> and, and so I can just lean into it and get a really big stretch. And I'm just my, trying to bring my kneecap towards the wall and my belly and back towards the wall. And I get a really big stretch all through. So for your hypermobile people, if you want to try it in standing, that might be the right way to do it, would be to get against the wall and try it there. Try it on yourself, see what you think. But um, that might be another way if you don't want to have them have to get to the floor and do it. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, go ahead. Share one other um, quad stretch that I've been playing with. Um, so this, uh, I think a few weeks ago, Zaina, you showed one on top of the roller. We're kind of bringing the feet under. Yes. Um, and so I decided to do that sort of unilaterally. So I went from the hip flexor stretch on the roller with, you know, the non-stretching side in, um, and then bent that knee in and walked the heel toward the, toward the roller. And it became a little less active of a stretch, a little more like a little less in the low back, I felt for a lot of people. They probably shear at the at the um, sacrum, I, I suppose, if somebody's really unstable. But it was a nice one. Just thought I is the roller long along your spine, or your hips are across the roller? Yeah, oh, sorry, hips across the roller. Can you are you able to show it, Johnny? Or Dana? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you would set up like your hip flexor stretch. Mm-hmm. 
And then you would bend the left knee and walk the foot in. This way. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. so somebody who's tight in the quad, that would probably can be get this. Tight. Yeah. Yeah. And it sort of actively pushes the hip into or the pelvis. Yeah. In. No under. Yeah. This I've been doing similar here. Um, and having them just hold this and coccyx curl without lifting the tail. So that a lot of people, their knees then go that way, but so you could put the ball there too. But if you coccyx curl in this position and then you walk the feet in and coccyx curl again, this really opens the front of the thighs and gets the glutes active too. So yes, I generally did it. One is a little more isolated, maybe a great place to learn it, maybe a better place to learn it than my two-legged version of it. But in both cases, you can get some opening here. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, awesome. So that's that's kind of what we did. Um, and it, the activation really seemed to help her. So, you know, there may be people that you have that you see that they're not activating properly maybe doing a little piece of that work on the floor. And this is somebody, she has a reformer at home. She's really excited about using her reformer and I want to get her going on her reformer. So she's just inspired to keep working. But at the same time, she's like, oh my gosh, this is so different. I'm gonna do this again the next time before I get on the reformer to make sure that I have everything on the way it should be on. Cause it felt so much better to her to have her muscles ready to go. Yeah. So getting those little intrinsics, it all comes back to that, those little intrinsic muscles. Um, having them do their work is so important to the right mechanic of the motion. Yeah. Can you feel it, Kim, as a stretch? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. interesting, good one. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. That's what I had for her case study wise. Uh, do you guys have any other questions about that or ideas, thoughts? Okay. Well, next week's theme, just to wrap up with that idea that I had proposed is um, alignment of the leg. So just wanted to refresh the idea of why it's so important even when your leg is not weighted to have good alignment so that when you're on your leg you can actually have good alignment of your leg what happens if you're parallel what happens when you're turning out so a, a lot of people i have one of my pet peeves i think you all know this already is that when we do things with our legs they're just sort of a half halfway there they never finish and then come in or you'll see like just sloppy leg things happening um, why, you know, connecting this alignment and strengthening here to alignment when we get up to standing, I think is really key, right? I should be able to have this good zipped up alignment parallel and turned out. And then that way I can take that into standing and work on the alignment. And I wanted to address talking about the hip, knee, foot alignment a little bit more to, um, to them in standing. So I was gonna do a lot of the laying down stuff, probably hips on roller stuff, um, probably like circling legs, single leg circles, things like that, that make them pay attention to straightening the knee, aligning the foot and knee in all directions of the motion. And then doing a lot of work in standing where we're like the four way hip stuff, where we're going in four directions with that leg, but having to have your stance leg aligned and your moving leg aligned or awareness of where that's going as well. Uh, and just relating that to functional, like to back to gait at the end. So how does that apply to walking? How does it apply to hiking? How does it, how does a squat apply to a hike? How do we, how do we adjust core alignment? How do we know where we're weak and where we want to strengthen for, to get better alignment? So that was going to be my goal teaching them next week is talking about alignment of the leg. So if you feel like hopping on board, you're welcome to, or using or sharing and see how it goes. And that would be great or pick your own. <laughs> so, all right, everyone, we'll have a great rest of your day and um, I will see you all next week.